Welcome back. This is a short tutorial on how to use Photoshop and how to use uh, Photopea to be able to do some basic photo manipulation. We're going to start with a basic photo. We're going to do some manipulation with it with lighting and also with the uh, color s saturation, different types of effects that you could possibly use, along with how to add some text and how to add different types of shading. Let's get into it. So for this example, you could be using uh, Photoshop. That is certainly a way you can do this. I'm going to show you how you could use photop.com to be able to complete this, as well as how to use Photoshop. So if you're on a lab computer, uh, you can go down to this uh, search function, and you can search for Photoshop. Or if you have Photoshop, just open that up by typing photo into a search down here, and you can open up Photoshop. Now, if you don't have Photoshop on your computer, no worries, I'm also going to show you how you can do this on Photopy, which is a free online image manipulator. The reason it's free is because there's ads on the side. So if you have some type of ad blocker, of course you can use that, and then you won't have to worry about anything, and you'll basically have a free version of Photoshop that you can play around with. Now that said, I'm going to show you how you can use both of these, uh, both of these suites together to be able to create a project. So I'm going to start off by opening some pictures here. I'm going to start by going to open from computer. And I'll find a picture that I want to use. I'll have one picture here. And this is a picture of, uh, of my daughter, Zavita, handing a <laughs> an acorn to a squirrel here. So we're going to ma manipulate this photo. That should be fun. And then in Photoshop, I'll also open project here. Just find whatever kind of picture you want to play around with. If it's a portrait picture, that's good. If not, if it's some other type of picture, here's a picture of a bird here on a windowsill. This is going to be the other picture that's going to be manipulated. So you can see here that uh, Photoshop is opened up. You can simply go to File and Open to, to open up one of your, your pictures here. And the main things that you're going to want to see in Photoshop are over here on the bottom right. You're going to see something that says layers, and this is where your pictures are, uh, where each layer of your image will be. And the same thing in PhotoP, it's going to be essentially identical. You're going to see that there's also layers over here. So in this case, it made a layer one and a main layer. I'm just going to take this, this layer one and remove it because we don't need it. You can select a layer and press the garbage can down here to be able to delete layers. And now we can see that they're both basically the same. Now, a few helpful tips about how to move around in Photoshop. If you hold down Control and then use the mouse wheel, let's see if it's the same for both of these. OK, sorry. If you hold down Alt on the keyboard and use the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. So this is very useful to know how to do. Just hold down Alt and use the mouse wheel. That's how you can zoom in and out in both PhotoP and Photoshop. Other thing that's helpful, if you're zoomed in pretty far, you can hold down the space bar, and you'll see that your icon turns into a hand, or your cursor turns into a hand. From there, you can click and drag the image around, as long as you're holding down the space bar. So this will be really helpful for if you, wanted to, uh, if you wanted to zoom in on just one section of the photo and manipulate it. That's how you can do that. And this happens in both Photoshop and in Photo So you can see that the instance, that they're basically going to be identical for what you can do here. All right, now let's say, uh, let's just mess around with some basic color manipulation first. How do I play around with colors? Well, if you want to do stuff with photos, a good idea is to use adjustment layers. And adjustment layers are going to be found down here in the bottom right of the screen. You're going to see something that looks like a little black and white circle. If you click on this, you'll see that you have all these options of things that you could add in there. The two that we're going to play around with are these ones in the, uh, in the color section here which are levels and curves. So let's start with levels first. I'm going to click on levels, and you're going to see this thing up here pop up. And this is called a histogram. Now, histograms are really important in photography, but I'm going to give you the basics of how a histogram works here. The basics are the left-hand side over here of the histogram is going to be all the dark colors. And you can see there's a little slider down here that is showing the, the blacks of the of the, the darkest pixels of the image that you're currently manipulating. Over here, we have the midpoint of the, uh, or, or the middle range uh, color lightness of your picture. 
And over here, you have all the really light, bright white ones that are in the picture. So these are actually sliders right here. And you can see, I'm going to grab the midpoint here and just drag it left and right. And you're going to see what it does to my image. Ooh, OK. If I have something that's really dark and I want to brighten it up, it might be as easy as clicking on this, uh, this middle line right here and dragging to the left. Now, you're going to notice that the really dark pixels in the screen are not really affected by this. It's more all the stuff in the middle that's affected. Other stuff that you can do is over here, if I can drag the dark. So if I want to drag the dark over to the left-hand side, ooh, look at that. It makes the darkest pixels are going to be considered to be right here. So this would be like totally black over here. Wherever I, I drag this, this is what the computer is going to consider to be the darkest possible pixels. So you can see that I'm kind of cutting off all the stuff that used to have color information. That's all going to consider, be considered by the computer to now be totally black. So we can see that this can really change the way that an image looks. And the same thing over here on this side, you can see that there's not a whole lot in this particular image of things that are totally bright white. So if I wanted to make colors really pop out, I could take this and drag it over to the left until I get now these pixels that had some information over here are going to be considered to be really bright white. And you can see that it really brightens up the picture there. It was like this. And if I drag this over now, the, the things that were once kind of gray, but still the lightest pixels on the screen are going to be brighter and brighter. And look at that. I can kind of wash this thing out. So you have some control, some really easy control over your, your general uh, look of your pictures just by manipulating these little sliders right here. That's all you really have to do. So very easy way for you to be able to take an image that may be like uh, too dark and be able to go in or too bright or something like that and be able to change it to where you kind of restore it and fix it. Let's see how we can do this in Photo P as well. So here we are in Photo P. I can see we've got all these different, uh, it's kind of blue this picture is, but you're going to see it's the same thing. It's a dark and uh, black and white circle here. Go up and you have levels. Go into levels, look at that. We've got these properties here. We've got the ability to have this histogram, and you can see the histograms here. I can take the, these properties, and I can drag the middle to make things lighter or darker. I can change these things to make it brighter, and these to make it darker, the cutoff point for the, the pixels. So once again, lots of fun stuff you can do with just a basic levels adjustment. Now, beyond the basic level adjustment, you're going to notice that it says channel RGB. If you go in here, you can see that you can choose individual channels. For example, if I look at this, this picture, I can see that it's, it's really blue. Right? If I look at this picture, there's a lot of blue hue to it. And I might want to bring that down a little bit. So the way you can do this is you can go into where it says channel, and you can choose red, green, or blue channels. I'm going to choose the blue channel here. And now if I move the midpoint of this, watch what happens. I'm adding more blue. Or if I drag it to the right side, I'm taking away some blue. Ooh, there we go. That looks better. I kind of like that more. It was too blue. So I just took the midpoint here, dragged it to the right a little bit, and that's going to take some of that blue out of there. There we go. That's a much better looking image than what I had before. Excellent. If we go back into the other picture over here and do that same type of process, let's see what kind of things we can do in regular Photoshop. So here we are. I can go up here and change it from RGB. I can choose a particular color. So let me go to green here. And if I drag to the left, it adds more green. If I drag to the right, it takes away the green. So you have the ability to kind of change what kind of colors you want to add to your scene or subtract to your scene. Or you can mix them. Of course, uh, this is your canvas. So you can do whatever you want to your images. The sky's the limit. My suggestion to you, though, is that when you're learning these tools, to not overdo it. If you're trying to make something Try to use a bunch of small, subtle effects. It'll make things look better than if you totally uh, blast out one type of effect. But you know, you do you. Uh, different artists have different styles of doing things. All right, so now we have figured out a little bit about how to use the levels, uh, the levels layer adjustment, uh, adjustment layer to be able to affect our, our picture. Now, if you look down here, you'll see that the levels adjustment layer is right here. And you can actually click on this little eyeball. It's on top of the background layer. And that's going to affect anything that's below it. So if I wanted to hide it, I could click this little eyeball, and you would see what the difference is. So I can see that originally the picture looked like this. 
when I click on the eyeball, you can see everything gets brighter. And if I wanted to make some obvious change, like make it more red, then you can see that that change would go through. All right, so we've talked a little bit about how to use levels. Let's go to the next level, <laughs> so to speak, and we're going to play around with curves. Now, curves are a way for you to have more control over color than just having it apply to the entire image. Let's see how we can use that. And if we go over here and check out in PhotoP, the same types of properties, you can see uh, PhotoP has this thing up here where you can drag uh, the properties of a particular window, all the, all the stuff that has to do with uh, the, the adjustment layer that you have chosen. You can click up here to be able to hide that or, uh, or show it up here. So there's like a little menu bar up here at the very top in case it's taking over your, your view space here. All right, so I can go back in here. The nice thing about these adjustment layers is you can go back at any time. And if I wanted to cha change it up a little bit to make it look brighter and take away some of this darkness here, then uh, you can do it. So it's, it's a nice thing because it's, it's considered non-destructive. If I wanted to go back and change it later on, I have the ability to do it. All right, let's talk about curves. So curves are the next level of being able to manipulate color. And with curves, you can go and select, uh, I'm going to make another adjustment layer here, and I'm going to choose curves instead of levels. You'll see it's right next to levels in the adjustment layers properties. I'm going to go to curves here, and you're going to see this pop up. So this is very much like what we just saw as far as it's a, it's a histogram, and it shows all the dark pixels, all the middle range pixels, and all the high, uh, the the bright pixels of our image. So dark pixels would be like the, the bottom part of this, uh, this window right here. Maybe some of the dark feathers. The middle range would be like the green uh, background and like the, the shelf right here. And then the white pixels would be like the sky up here. So depending on what your image looks like, you're going to have more or less uh, pixels that are listed on this graph right here. Now the difference between curves and levels is you can make gradual changes to things. So you're going to see this, this line right here. Let's take a look at this line and try to understand what's going on here. Right now, this white line that goes from the bottom to, or the bottom left to the top right of this, this uh, histogram is basically telling you that you're going to have equal weight of distribution to all the pixels that you have here. Now, just for an example here, I'm going to click in the middle of this line right here. And you're going to see that it makes a little point. And I can drag this point up or down. Now, what this is doing is it's going to make the pixels that are listed here darker or brighter depending on, here's, this is what the normal image would look like if you had that line just be perfectly along the middle. If I want it darker, I can drop it down. And if I want it lighter, I can bring it up. Now, the difference between this and levels is that you can see it's a gradual thing. It's making the dark, dark pixels only slightly, uh, slightly lighter. And here in the middle, it's making them quite a bit. If we, if we compare it to that middle line there, it's making them quite a bit lighter. And then up here, it doesn't quite affect it as much. And the crazy thing is you can drag these, this uh, curve to get all kinds of effects. Let's kind of look at some of the things you can do. If I want to make it brighter, I can make it very slightly brighter. Or I can drag this up. You probably don't want to do something like this unless you're trying to make, like, I don't know, a deep fried meme or something like that. Then you might want to do something like this. But uh, basically, this allows you very, very minor adjustment that is more gradual and usually better looking than if you uh, use levels. So a lot of times professional photographers will use uh, curves. And one of the most common curves to use is the S curve. They call it an S curve, and it's because the curve looks like an S. You put one point right here in the middle. You want to keep your midpoints the same, but you're going to boost your your uh, you're going to boost your high your uh, light pixels. You're going to just make them a little bit brighter, <clears throat> and then you're going to make your dark pixels just a little bit darker. So that makes it that makes it basically uh, more dynamic. It takes the lights of your picture and makes them lighter, and it takes the darks of your picture and makes them darker. And so it achieves this effect, this effect of having things look more dynamic. That is, there's less uh, muddy middle range stuff, and instead you have suddenly, look at that, the darks are darker, 
and the lights are lighter. So you get this really cool effect of things popping out more. It's more dramatic of an effect. And this is commonly done in almost every professional photo magazine and anything like that. They're going to be using this, this effect right here of having curves that have darker darks and lighter lights. And this is called an S-curve. Now, how did I make that? Let's walk through this process one more time so you can see. I'm going to go back in Photo P and show it to you here. So first thing that you do is you go down and you add an adjustment layer. You go up and you choose a curves adjustment layer. From there, you get this thing that has this line in the middle here. Keep in mind, you can do this with, once again, uh, we can do it with red, green, and blue, or s just individual channels. So you can kind of play around with that way. If you wanted to make you know, just certain areas, the darks have more greens, and the lights have more blues or yellows or whatever, you can play around with these effects, and you can really get different kind of uh, looks. But right now, I'm just going to show you the basics that is just using red, green, and blue. So I click in the middle here to, to create a dot there. I can drag that up or down, and you'll see what kind of effect it has on the, on the picture there. However, I want my midpoints to remain the same, so I'm just going to click and leave that right there in the middle. Then I'm going to go up here and click on kind of this quadrant up here and drag that up. And as I drag this up, you're going to see that it affects, uh, it affects all the pixels in the background. So if I drag these closer together, this is like an inverse S curve, and you can see what it does is it, it makes everything really gray. It takes all the highlights, all the brights and lows, and it kind of mixes them together to make them just this dull gray. Very infrequently used, but you know, different arti artists might, you might find a reason to use that kind of effect. But most of the time you'll want an S curve. Now how, how extreme the S curve you want to make that's up to you. How bright do you want the brights to be? How dark do you want the brights, darks to be? It's up to you. But I would once again suggest that you use subtlety. So I'm going to make this just subtly, slightly lighter. And maybe I'll take the dark points and I'll make them slightly darker. So you can see that now I have this S curve. The darks are darker. The lights, I can move those and make them however bright I want them to be. It's pretty cool. All right. And now if I close this... Uh, this box, we can check this out. Look at that. Now it's much brighter. We can see what the original photo looked like. It originally looked like this, so it was kind of blue. I added levels, and I changed the, the blue level to be able to bring down the blues, which kind of fixed the photo, so to speak. And then under curves here, I added that, and you can see that that really changes the amount of darks and lights that are in, the, in this picture. You can see that it drastically affected what is dark and what is light. So cool, we have some tools now that we can use to be able to edit photos to improve them. If I go in here, I can play around with this stuff. Now, the cool thing about these particular, uh, these particular adjustment curves, these adjustment layers, is that you can target them. So right now, I'm just saying I want everything in the picture to be uh, done with these curves. But let's say I wanted just one area of this to be uh, in that curve. A way I could do this is I could first select the area. So up here, I'm going to select the marquee tool. I'm going to hold down the mouse button, and you'll see something that says ellipse select. That's what I'm going to use for this, just so I can select an area. I'm going to select this, uh, this, the, the point that I want uh, the viewer to focus on, which is right here, this, uh, this squirrel right here. And now if I select this area, you're going to see I just clicked and dragged out a little area, and that's basically making a circle. If I, if I look real close, you can see what we call marching ants right here, and that's just showing you that that area has been selected. Now what I can do is I can add an adjustment layer. Let me, let me add a curves adjustment layer, and I'll make it uh, instead of RGB, I'll make it with red. And if I drag this to the left, look at this. I can select just one area. And that will make it to where these curves only occur in that one area. Look at that. OK. So suddenly, I have some ability to make some fun stuff. And what's cool about this is that you can actually select this area, and you can move it around. So if I wanted that, that one adjustment layer to be somewhere else, now I have the ability to select just one area and then move it where I want it to be. All right, we're starting to get some abilities of being able to manipulate color
but select where we want that color manipulation to be instead of just selecting the entire picture. Now there's other ways we can do this. Let's check it out. I'm gonna go into Photoshop and play around with this. Let's say I wanted this, uh, this birdie picture here to have an adjustment layer to where maybe I just wanted the bird selected and everything else I want to have a different picture or a different color. There's a few ways that you could do this. There's a lot of different selection tools that are available in Photoshop. Uh, the very basic one is the marquee tool. So here I can select an area. Let me just select this area, this bird right here, this general area. And then I could add an adjustment mask and I'll say curves. And I'm just going to make an area brighter. So you can see that I can make this, this bird brighter or darker just by dragging that. Now, just so you know, the way that this is being affected is there's a, ma there's a mask on the, uh, the layer right here. So you can see right here, I select this one area and anything that's white will be affected. Anything that's black will be left alone. It's basically invisible on here. If you have a layer like this, you can select the move, the move tool and then you can just si simply uh, click and move that wherever you want it to be. And you can see that down here, it's almost like it's a cutout, cutout region that I can move around. So just so you know, you can, uh, you can adjust and refine your masks in case you don't have it quite where you want it to be. Now, one way that you could adjust this mask is you could simply use the brush tool. I'm going to use the brush tool here and paint with black, the color black. And that will make it to where whenever I paint anything with the black, it's going to take away from that mask. And if I want to paint with white instead, and a way you can do that is simply clicking up here or pressing X uh, or switching your colors here or just picking white, that's totally fine too. But if I paint with white, it's going to put that, that adjustment back on there. And if we look at this mask tool here, you can see that I'm, if I paint black, it's going to hide whatever effect this layer has, the curves layer. And if I paint with black, it's going to remove it. So I have these different abilities to be able to affect what this layer does. So let me just real quick, I'm just going to use the brush tool. And with a big brush here, I'm just going to take this stuff away real quick, do it all by hand. I'm just going to click real fast. Uh, no, the only paper type is a letter printer for here. If you want to print it with like color on a photo, you might be able to do that if you go down to the Career Center. You might be able to print it out at the Career Center. This is only, the printer in here is only a black and white uh, letter size printer. So if you wanted to print it out in color on like photo, color photo or something, you'd have to do that with, uh, you'd have to do that with like the, the printer that's down at the office. The uh, You just know you need the file and then you can go down there with your laptop and then you can tell them, hey, I, can I print this out for McDowell's class? Yeah, you should be able to do that. No, go to the career center or to the counseling office. Either one of those should do it. Uh, the counseling office. The counseling office is, okay, yeah, probably easy. All right, so that's one way that you can manually adjust a mask. You can just paint with black and white. So that's one way that you can do it. And what's cool is that now just this one area here, as you can see here, I've used a mask to be able to kind of try to draw out with white what is gonna be affected. I tried to kind of affect the bird here. Not the best mask. A lot of times people will go in and really get in detail with it. But now you can see that if I change this, this uh, effect of this layer, it's going to affect just that one area. So I have a lot of capabilities of what I can do now. If I go in here to my curves, I can choose maybe I don't want to do red, green, and blue, but I want to change just one color like green. If I click and change this, look at that. I can affect the color of this bird however I want. And it's, it's a really powerful tool to be able to play around with this. But there's more than this. Let's, that's, a, that's a very manual way to do this. Let me show you yet another way to be able to play around with this. And I'll show you another adjustment layer. So another adjustment layer that we have here is one called hue slash saturation. 
And this is a really common one that, that is used in photography as well. If we get a hue saturation mask, you're going to see this slider up here. Here, let's check out some of the options. So the first option up here is the hue. The next one is saturation. Then there's lightness. And then there's a little box down on the bottom. Or uh, let's see, where is it here? There's a box on, down on the bottom that says colorize. These are the main options for the hue saturation mask uh, adjustment layer. So the first one that I would have you look at is saturation. Let's take a look at this. If I want to make this photo into a black and white photo, all you have to do is turn the saturation down to zero. There we go. It's black and white now. Cool. If I want to have just a little bit of color to make it kind of faded, but still have some color information, you can add saturation. So saturation is how vivid are the colors in your particular, uh, in your particular photo. Now, if I, if I drag this up beyond 50, now I get really vivid colors. Oh, deep fried meme. That's basically what happens here. You just super saturate colors. And now it's psychedelic, baby. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And let's check out a few of these other options. Lightness does kind of what you'd expect. It makes things really bright or really dark. Pretty simple. But the one thing that is interesting is there's this hue slider. And if you drag the hue slider, you're going to see, ooh, OK. This kind of gives me different rainbow effects of what kind of hue I want my picture to look like. And with this in combination with your saturation slider can create some cool effects. You can have things that have a slight purple hue or an extreme purple hue. You've got a lot of power with the, uh, with the adjustment layer here called hue saturation. Now, the last one that's, that's useful here is this little box that says colorize. If you click colorize, it's going to make everything in your picture just one color. And that is whatever your hue is right here. So this is a way that you can pick just one color. And you can make everything like a black and white photo that has been tinted whatever color you want, which is pretty useful. A lot of people like this effect. And you can add just a little bit of color or you can add a lot. So the hue saturation mask is great for this kind of thing if you wanted to make a photo that looks cool. Now, let's say I wanted to use kind of a combination of things here. Maybe I wanted to make everything kind of like a dark purple here, except for the bird. What I can do is on my hue saturation layer right here, I can remember you can pick what is affected or not by this photo. Uh, I'm just going to use the black uh, brush here. And I'm going to draw over the bird. And look at that. It's bringing the color back to where just that one bird is now not affected by the layer that I put on. So this is a way for you to be able to have colorization for just one area or one particular thing. And remember, if you mess up, you can always go in and refine the mask by painting with white instead of black. So let me change that up. And I'm painting with black instead of white. You can remove stuff. So there are some capabilities of how you can do this. Once again, this is a manual mask. So if I wanted to get really particular, a lot of selection, a lot of things in Photoshop are all about selections, being able to pick one particular region of something that you want to play around with and be able to ignore everything else. So let's see how we can do that here in Photoshop. I'm going to take these layers away here just so we can see how this works. I'm just going to drag it in the trash here. The way I'm going to select this is I can see that this is mostly one color. This area of this bird is mostly one color. So there's a way that we can select just one color range. And that is by going up here to where it says select and then going down to where it says color range. And now that makes it to where I can select a particular color range. And what that color range is going to look like, you'll see this dialog box pop up. Anything that's white will be selected and anything that's black will not be. And you'll see that you kind of have this eyedropper tool. So I can select the bird. And I can see that it's going to try to select all the, the pixels that are that color in the image. And you can see it's getting some stuff over here that I might not want. But you can actually also add to the color by holding down Shift or clicking on this little plus eyedropper over here to add to the sample. And now I can just hold down Shift, and I can click on this bird until I get all the birds selected. I want all that information. And then I'm going to press the minus key and click all over this green, because I don't want any of that stuff. 
So you can see that it's refining this mask or refining the selection here. Now the other slider, you have one slider that you can kind of play around with, which is the fuzziness here. And if you add or, or remove that fuzziness slider, you can add different effects here. So I'm going to just select this area here. That's pretty good. I'll press OK. And now you can see the marching ants have selected all this stuff. Now, a good way to do this is to select, before you do color range, you can select just one area. Like, I want just this bird right here. Then you do your color range select, and it will take all that other stuff out of there. So you can see I'm trying to just select the bird here. I'm going to hold down Shift and press plus, or Shift and click on the bird until this, the white area picks up the bird. Then I'm going to hold down Alt and click on the green here to be able to take that stuff out. There we go. You can adjust the fuzziness to adjust how much that is, uh, that is also put in. There we go. Now I have this nice mask that's going to be created. I can press OK. And from here, I can add that adjustment layer. And it's just going to adjust the bird. Look at that. And there's a little region there that got caught as well. So you can see I can turn the bird blue. This little region up here, if I just took a black brush to it, I could take that stuff out. So now this is refining a mask to where I don't have to go and do all the manual work. I have to do a little bit of touch up because the computer is kind of a dumb rock that we taught how to think. But I have the ability to refine it pretty quickly. So there we go. Looks pretty good. And now I can just do this hue saturation. I can change the color of the bird to pretty much anything that I want really quickly and easily. And if I use this in conjunction with some of my other tools, like the, the curves and the levels, you can get some really cool looking effects really quickly. So I hope this was fun for you. I hope you got something out of this as far as creating something. Let's say we wanted to put a Happy Mother's Day thing in here as well. I got this nice bluebird. I'm going to put uh, some text up here. The text tool is the T over here. So you can simply click on the T, click and drag. And it's going to put some text in there automatically for you. I'm going to put Happy Mother's Day. You can see it's really small. So I'm probably going to want to adjust the size of this. A way you can adjust the size of layers is you can use the Move layer or the Move tool. And then make sure that you have Show Transform Controls selected up at the top of this. It says Show Transform Controls. That means that I can basically adjust the size of this object by clicking on these borders here and dragging them out. So you can see that I can, I can make this text bigger or smaller. Another way you can do this is by simply using the Text tool, clicking and dragging over the text that you want to affect and then changing the size of the font, which is up here at the top of, of the menu here. So I'll make it bigger. That's all right, probably a little bit bigger than that. You can punch in numbers too if you'd like. So I'll put 150. Happy Mother's Day. There we go. If you wanted to change the color of the text, you can do that by clicking up here. They're printing it out for you. Um, she said she was going to have to touch it because that means you're going to have to touch it. OK. You can choose whatever kind of font you want up here as well. So notice that there's a whole bunch of different font styles that you could choose. You can also uh, change the color of it. So maybe I want the color to be exactly the same color as the bird here. A way you can do that is you can click on the color selection here. You can pick whatever kind of rainbow color you want. You can pick whatever shade you want. But if you want to pick something specifically from the picture here, you'll notice that if I put my cursor over this, it becomes an eyedropper. So I can just click on the bird. And it's going to pick the color of the bird. All right, that made it easy. I didn't have to try to match it up myself. I can just select the, the color right there from the canvas. So if I wanted it to be the green of the, the bush back here, I could do that. Or if I click down here, you can see it selects the color of the picture that you want. All right, now I'm going to press OK. Last thing that may be useful for you is using, uh, using Layer styles. So layer styles are really useful, especially with text. Let me, let me change the font to this. There we go. 
Layer styles are really useful for text. Like right now, you can kind of see this Happy Mother's Day, but I probably want to add a little bit of extra value to this text to make it easier to read, like something like a stroke. So I'm going to select. Uh, in order to do that, make sure you have a layer selected. Right now, I have the text layer selected, which is it says Happy Mother's Day. And you can tell it's a text layer because it has a big T right here. If you double click just to the outside of where the text is on the text layer, it'll open up layer styles, which you'll see right here. So that's how I typically do it. I typically click just outside on the layer, uh, just outside of where the, the text is. But another way you can do this is going up to where it says layer on the top and then going down to where it says layer style. And then you'll have all these different layer styles that you could put in. I'm going to put in a stroke. We'll see what a stroke does here. So you'll see that the layer styles are all right here. You can click on any one of these, and it will add that effect to it. But you can see right here the stroke effect basically draws a line outside of your text. This is really useful. I can change the size of it. So look at that as I drag this. You can see it makes it bigger, so it makes it easier to read. Uh, you can change the position of it from inside to outside or centered. Usually I use outside because it's easier to control. And then you have uh, the color of it. So if I wanted to change the color of it, once again, you can use the, uh, you can use the actual uh, colors of the picture if you want, which is usually pretty useful. You can make it black, you can make it white, or any color in between. Maybe I'll go with that. That works pretty good. And there we go. Now we've got a nice image where we can, we can play around with the colors. Everything is additive, so if I wanted to just press, if I wanted to hide something, I can see what the original image looked like once upon a time. It looked like this. What did we add? We added hue saturation on just the bird to change it into blue. We added a text layer to make it look like that. And then we added levels to be able to brighten it up and curves to make the brights brighter and the darks darker. Lots of fun tools to be able to use to be able to really manipulate photos and make them really interesting. I hope you have fun with this project. And uh, remember to be creative and to have fun with it. The more that you practice these things, the better you get. Let's take a look at that photo P process here. Same kind of idea here. A lot of the same tools are in photo P as in uh, Photoshop. You can go up to select and color range. That's still there. Uh, layer and layer style. All that stuff is there. So. A lot of the same stuff that you do in, that I just showed in Photoshop, we can do those same things here in PhotoP. So I can select an area, let's say that. I can add a uh, adjustment layer, let's say the hue saturation layer. Same exact things. You got hue, you got saturation, you've got colorize, all that stuff is here. So you can kind of play around with those, those properties. You can use, if you click on the mask over here on the layer, you can adjust what is affected or not. Here you can see it's a, it's a white circle or in a black background. If I selected this mask area and then used the brush and painted with black, you'll see I can take areas away. And if I paint with white instead, then I can put them back. So all that stuff is still here. Have fun with what you create. Enjoy the process a bit. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to use Dodge and Burn, which is the last part of this. Dodge and Burn tools have been around for a long time. A lot of times it's used in, uh, in wedding photography, those kind of things. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how that can be used. The Dodge and Burn tools are over here. On the left-hand side, it looks like a little hand. You'll see something that says dodge and burn and sponge. So dodge and burn are really, you make l things lighter or darker. It retains the same color information, but you can pick an area. It's like a brush that makes things lighter or darker. These are actually, uh, they come from Lightroom techniques back when people used to actually use dark rooms and uh, they'd, they'd use chemicals to be able to produce their, their uh, photographs. So if I go to the dodge tool here, uh, I have to select a text or a layer that has color information, like the background layer here. And if I 
if I dodge something, it makes it lighter. So you can see I'm gonna, I'm just gonna choose the size of my brush here. I'm gonna make it kind of a soft brush here so it's not really a hard brush. Make sure that you're using a, a soft brush to do this. And you're gonna see that I can kind of click around just certain areas of this. Like if I wanted to select the bird and click on the bird. Oh, this is clone stamp, sorry. Let me choose dodge tool. If I click on the bird, watch what happens. The bird will get brighter. And I'm just clicking a few times to be able to make that bird stand out. Now, if I wanted to make things darker, I could use the, the burn tool, which is the other, it's underneath this area right here. By the way, you can press O to be able to change these tools. If you hold down shift and press O, you can cycle between the different tools. So that's a useful tool to know how to do. All these tools over here on the left, if you hold down shift and you press the hotkey for them, it will cycle through them. So here I have the dodge tool. Let's say I want to make the, the bird brighter and I want to make the corners of the photo here darker. I could simply go to my burn tool and I'm going to make the edges here darker. Happy Mother's Day. Take this stuff out a little bit. There we go. So that kind of tells the viewer what to focus on. I'm just taking the, the corners here and making them darker. And I'm making the middle here brighter. So there we go. We saw how we could use the dodge and burn tools to be able to take information, create shadows essentially, and also to create uh, pockets of light. I hope you have fun with this project. Until next time, think for yourself and be that person you wish you could be, someone you'd respect through your actions and someone that you would admire.